A few days ago, I was scrolling through the Twitters when I came upon a tweet by Roberto Baldwin from Engadget that said he was broadcasting live from his drive with notorious iPhone hacker George Hotz in his new self-driving car. I tuned in, and then I had to tune out because I was too frightened that something horrible was going to happen. Joining us to talk about his experience is Roberto Baldwin from Engadget. Welcome, Roberto. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so still alive. You're still Good. alive. No <laughs> worry. Uh, and of course, you know, he could always take the wheel, so it wasn't that dangerous. Uh, so George Hotz, also known as GeoHot, he's a well-known iPhone hacker. And back in December, Hotz popped up back up in the news after a profile on Bloomberg. He claimed to be developing new self-driving car technology, and he planned to take on Tesla. So tell us about your drive. It was... Uh it was kind of, I mean, the actual drive itself, I mean, it was impressive, especially when it's it's being run off a single camera and radar. That's really, that's that's everything running the car. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a trained AI that they've been training by driving the car around as opposed to hand coding, like this is a car, this is a boat, this is, you know, a child. It like, it learns from somebody driving it. So if you're a good driver, you know, they've been teaching it to drive by being good drivers. Um, so it, it was... It was impressive, but at the same time, it was a little bit uneventful, which is kind of what you want. With a, you know, yeah. it's, they're semi-autonomous or autonomous. I mean, there were there was one time where he, you know, the car didn't stop as quickly as we liked while coming up on a a, a stopped vehicle. But he's right there. He just put the brakes on, and it was yeah, it was a split second of like oh, which if you've ever driven in a car with someone who's a bad driver, I mean, that's that split second just keeps going and going and going the entire drive. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it, it, you know, uh, George is a, he, he's a colorful character. He, he's very smart. Um, and he's, he's a really fun interview and he, he's, you know, you, 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 when you're around him, it's kind of infectious, his sort of, uh, excitement at what's, what he's doing and what's going on. And plus, as you see here, there was this giant red button in case the computer just lost its mind. <laughs> like he just like, it was just a giant safety where you just smash it and then you're, you're, you're good to go. So did you find yourself putting your foot on the imaginary brake in the passenger seat? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, the car, the, the, the follow distance between the, uh, the, uh, the comma car and the car in front of us far larger than, you know, most of my friends when they're driving it, you know, it doesn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't tailgating. It wasn't doing anything sort of out of the ordinary. It wasn't sort of like veering into traffic. Um, so it, it was, yeah, it was, it, 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 they, they're trying to make it a far safer vehicle than, than you knew or I so obviously Google has a ginormous team working on this, as do other companies. Tesla, you know, Tesla has mm -hmm. devoted a lot of time to this. Uber. Supposedly Apple, Uber, uh, they all have these teams. They're all gi gigantic companies with with more money than, than uh, well, definitely more money than Geohot. Um, how could a small company like Comma compete in this space? I know there are limitations to Comma's version of the technology mm. that's shown here. Uh, how do they compete? They, or do they need to? Maybe they. Maybe they're I, just I a different I sector. Think, I, I think, you know, you know, Google's Google's idea. You know, what Google wants to do is they're they're gonna they're gonna partner with someone in the future, and they yeah. seem like more they they would rather just have an autonomous car, like full autonomy. Mm -hmm. uh, Tesla. You know they're selling cars. They have the autonomous features. You know they have this the autopilot feature. It also does you know lane. You know you change lanes with it. It'll see signs. Uh, even though uh, George said those were sort of gimmicky, he did talk about like those will probably be in uh, later versions of the software. Um, you know it's it's weird. It's it's you know it's kind of you know we had these. Let's say Apple and the iPod. Apple made computers forever. Sony owned the music industry. It owned everything. You know, you had the, the, the Walkman, it had all these different things. And then Apple just sort of came along with the iPod. I think he's thinking with his, you know, his crew of six to eventually 20 employees, he can do the same thing. Um, and he wants to sell this to everybody. He doesn't think that people should have to buy a Tesla to get, you know, semi-autonomous semi uh, uh, features on their car. He doesn't think we should have to wait until we get a full autonomous car. He it, 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 I'm I'm very impressed with what they've done mm -hmm. since you know since he started back in September back in from from September to now I'm sitting in a car and he just <laughs> pushes a button and we're just like hands off let's go and see what happens wow so yeah I mean if if he's done it this quickly it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens by the end of the year when they're uh, supposed to uh, output or I'm sorry sell a piece of hardware you can just 
attached to your vehicle. I mean, if it was this, if it was done this quickly, it makes me kind of, at least in my head, and maybe this is an incorrect assumption to jump to, but it makes me reevaluate how challenging it must be to pull something like this off. I mean, that's an incredible turnaround time. Now, there were technical uh, disadvantages to Comma's implementation. Explain those a little bit. So, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's learning by driving. So it doesn't, you know, they're not hard coding, you know, they're not telling it like this is a car. They're not, you know, they're not the sort of deep learning where you're like, you're coding and this is a car. This is the type of lane. This is a type of this, this is a type, you know, mm -hmm. it's doing it by them as they drive around, it learns how to drive, which is why they're releasing the, the Schiffer app, which is uh, an app that we can all, you know, you, you, you put on the front of your car, you have it look out the windshield, well, not in the front of the car, in the windshield. That would be ridiculous. Put your smartphone in, on the front. <laughs> but you attach, you attach your smartphone to the windshield, it sees that side, and then you just drive. And while you're driving, it's collecting data. Um, it, it doubles as a dash cam, so you can, you know, if you get an accident or whatever. And it's going to feed all that information in, anonymously to, to Kama, who are going to use that information to help train their AI. And they're getting all the information, and they're setting it up against uh, basically a very safe driver uh, data set. Okay, so let's talk about the Schiffer app, which was originally called Chauffeur, and then you say yeah. that he realized people don't know how to spell Chauffeur, so they say <laughs> changed it to Schiffer, C-H-F-F-R, yeah. which is yeah. Chauffeur with no vowels. I I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He had it. He had Schiffer like in a in a in a PowerPoint deck, and I was looking at it and typing. He's like, "Don't, no, don't, 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 don't type it out. Don't. Yeah, you'll know why." It's, and then he like explained that we're, we're making it Schiffer. <laughs> so yeah, it's one of these things where it's like I, I don't know. I mean, I think Elon Musk is a little bit. Um, he's you know he comes out with some crazy things, uh, but but I don't know like if the, he's he's not exactly inspiring confidence in me. George Hotz isn't. Um, <laughs> but so what you're saying with the the Schiffer app. We're like, it's just going to be like, I, I would download it just to help out just for my own in edification. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, he's, he's, he's putting it out there for people to help, you know, the, the future of autonomous driving at the base of this, uh, he's very interested in AI and you, and AI is sort of the basis of all the autonomous driving. So AI is like really the core of what he's really interested in, but the best implementation of implementation of that in the real world is actually autonomous driving right now. So he, you know, so the idea is that we're all going to be using his app and we can use it either, you know, you want to be this great person who wants to help out AI, wants to help out autonomous driving, or you just want, you know, a dash cam app that you can, you know, go through and look at all your routes. And, you know, as you click on a route, it'll show you a picture of where you were. So, and then as you're using it, you get these, uh, these points, and then he wouldn't tell me what the points actually do, but he said if you're at the top of the leaderboard, you'll be happy. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess if you're, maybe if you're in the top five, you get a free, you know, comma hardware box when it comes out at the end of the year. Or maybe he comes to your house and gives you a hug. Or you know, you can never tell with 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 uh, with George. He's a he's a he's a wacky guy, and I I do understand that sort of like well, he seems a little rambunctious for someone I should be trusting my life with. Right. Uh, but at the same time, he's like this sort of rambunctious, but really, really smart. It's, it's, you kind of have to like, you know, you're gonna have to weigh that and see how that, how that works out for you when you're making a purchase. Well, he sort of reminds me a little bit of Kevin Rose, who's now like a, you know, a, a mature, successful person. But back in my day, when we were at Tech TV, like he was just a young hacker. And that's who he reminds me of. Uh, and I wouldn't trust him with my life either uh, back then. <laughs> but, <laughs> Maybe now, but. Yeah. So can I download the Shiffer app now? Now, the Shiffer app won't be available until the end of June. Um, and it's only going to be available on a couple Android phones. It's in the, it's on the on Engadget.com, it'll tell you which ones. Um, and then they're also working on uh, making an Android app. Uh, they Half of their respondents, people who signed up for the beta, wanted, you know, an iPhone app. So they're going to have that. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, if, if, and I'm sure there are going to be a ton of people who are going to want the app, who are going to want it for either, I think most people are going to want to be part of something that they think is the future of driving, which, you know, actually is. Mm -hmm. and, and helping this, this sort of underdog out. I mean, we're, I can't afford a Model S. I can't, you know, I can't, I don't want to wait for a Model 3. And, and if you get a Model 3, you still have to add all those autonomous features onto it. So 
if you could get, you know, most of those features for less than a thousand dollars on your car for traffic, that's, that's pretty impressive.